Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. This is Ted Hayes, homeless activist, your civil rights activist, emerging from the wilderness, bringing some light so we can see what's going on. Now, I've been talking about our birth certificate. In the last segment, we talked about um, something went down in this country called an apology. Did you know? No, you didn't know. But did you know? I knew. I saw it. I saw it in the news. It was on just for a blip. Just for a little blip. It was gone. It was gone, man. <laughs> they did it because they had to go on record that they did announce it. But uh, blip, gone. The greatest event since the Emancipation Proclamation to come out of Congress, to come out of the White House, to come out of Washington, D.C., the greatest document <laughs> In our history, came on June 26, 2008, the same summer that Barack Hussein Obama was nominated by, you know who, dun, 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 the Democratic Party, the party of chattel slavery and Jim Crow, okay, the party that wants to give you a birth certificate to foreigners, okay, Barack Obama was chosen that summer of all days on August the 28th, and go look up all the 28th and see what happened, 1963. Of all days, they chose Barack Obama to be the nominee for the Democratic Party for President of the United States. Now remember now, <laughs> this is the party of chattel slavery. This is the party that got you and everybody else out there hollering reparations today for what went down yesterday. For 145 years, my brothers and sisters and children, black people, since we were set free from slavery, have been complaining while the United States held us by law in chattel slavery and by law racially discriminated and segregated us, creating generational destruction upon this people. The United States never, however, by law, acknowledged chattel slavery that it was in possession of, nor did it apologize for chattel slavery and Jim Crowism. And that has been a sticking point over the generations between so-called black and white people on trying to get through this racial divide that has the country separated. The issue of you white people, I know you try to do little things to fix it up, but you never, excuse me, but you never officially acknowledged what you did nor have you apologized and until you do that there's an issue a thing between us you get that white boy that was our attitude right well god did something fantastic in 2008 the united states congress one-third of the federal government under the leadership of the democratic party wrote a resolution a resolution that actually acknowledged and apologized for chattel slavery and Jim Crow. They actually, did you know? No, you didn't, did you? They acknowledged it. They apologized for it. They said, they, and, and go look it up, look up, Google it up, go look up 2008 Congressional Apology Resolution for Slavery. Look it up for yourself and read and comprehend what you're reading. Because these folks, on behalf of every white person in this country, even first-generation immigrants who have become citizens, thereby they have been brought into our household, they have been apologized for. Now, the question you have to ask, what? How come we didn't know about that? Huh? How come there weren't fireworks and meetings and marches and parades and black and white people hugging one another and reconciling and so forth. How come that didn't happen? And it tells you right in here that we must reconcile, that apology is not enough, that you can't erase the, 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 the wrongs of the past. You can't erase it. But what we can do is seek to heal these things. They, they, they said that. And, and why wasn't there a celebration? And I called the office of the guy who wrote the law, uh, the congressman. He's from Tennessee. He's an Ashkenazi white Jewish dude, 
Okay, his name is Steve Cohen, a black a district put him in power. This Jewish man, he authored this greatest document, and 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 I called the office and I asked him a question rhetorically: Why wasn't there a celebration? And they said, "We well, don't know." They were being politically correct, right? But I said, "Well, let me tell you why." The same reason that John McCain said John McCain knew about this, and this is why he could say black people can get reparations. Black people can get are powerful. Black people are unique, but the African American leadership will not allow them to access that. And sure enough, I remember watching the NACP leaders uh, come on TV when this thing was announced. And you know what they said? They said, "Well, it don't go far enough. The word reparations ain't in there." Um, uh, it, it, and they dismissed it. They dismissed it. And here you are running around here hollering, Black Lives Matter at the white boy about what the white boy ain't doing or is doing for you. And you didn't even know all this time that them brothers that got shot down the streets like that, that didn't have to go down, y'all. That could have been a long time avoided. And all the other brothers and sisters laying up in the cemeteries around this country and in prison, all that did not have to happen. Because, because we have been operating under a sense of frustration that we can't get nowhere with this white man. He can't even acknowledge what he has done. How are we going to do anything? That's why we're bad. And we, 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 we turn our madness not against him. We turn our madness against ourselves. That's a great mystery. And so, so here we got this thing. The white man has finally did the unthinkable by law acknowledged what he's done and said help me help me to reconcile and the African American leadership slapped this white man's hand back on your on my behalf and we've been suffering you know something folks the reason why the African Americans didn't do it leadership because they don't know what to do with the niggas man they don't do with us that's why every time these African Americans get famous, make some money, what they do, y'all? They move out the hood. You look at the Reverend Wright of Chicago who tutored Mr. Obama. Guess where that white boy lives? That's right. He's white. He's whiter than the average white dude. Guess where he live? In a gated community in Chicago, in the rich white neighborhood. He knew it. Reverend Wright knew it. Every Christian bishop across this country knew it. Every black leader knew it. The Congressional Black Caucus knew it. They were there. They signed the document. But they kept it quiet because the old slave saying that goes, nobody cares what goes on in the slave quarters. Nobody knows what to do about the madness and sickness of my people. Black Lives Matter, that's the matter. What's the matter? That's the matter. We got issues and nobody want to deal with it because nobody knows how. Therefore, nobody wants to take responsibility for it because they take responsibility to lead and deal with it and they fail, they become culpable for it. And nobody wants to, wants to fail. But you know what? Instead of them brothers and sisters saying, I don't know how to deal with this, Hey, neighborhood, did you know the white man just apologized for what he did to us? Now, we need some ideas because the brother trying to say he wants to reconcile with us. Anybody got any ideas? No, they wouldn't do that. Mm -mm. I was around. I saw it. I'm, I'm the nation's leading homeless activist based in Los Angeles. Did they ask me? I live with black people on the sidewalk. Nobody in this country has ever done that. They run from black people. I run to black people. Firemen run to the fire. They run from the fire. They didn't have the audacity to say, hey, Ted, what's going on, man? Got any ideas? No. Because they enjoy the perks of being called civil rights leaders at our expense. Have y'all gotten, have we gotten any better since 2008, since we got a black African-American president? Have we gotten any better? No, we've gotten worse. I'll tell you something else, my brothers and sisters, my children. Mr. Obama, being the first African-American president, all he had to do as a candidate on June 26th, he could have called a news conference. He could have said, you know, I know there's a hope in this country that I, 
the first African-American president, will take our nation to be a post-racial society. And I just got a document in my hand. It's called the Apology Resolution for Chapter Slavery, something that we have been desiring for a long time, and the U.S. Congress has apologized. And as, as, as a future president, I concur. And I will continue to build on this legacy of reconciliation. And I thank you for trusting me with this. Or he could have did tonight that he was elected for the, you know, nominated. He could have got up as part of his speech. And as a sign that the Democratic Party has found its moral fabric. Yes, we did these things in the past. Yes, we were horrible. But we have found the truth. And the Democratic Party has led this Congress to apologize. And they now elected me, one of us, to represent them in this matter. Oh, my gosh. Or he could have done tonight he was elected. He could have said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a quiet secret for a long time. But now that I have been elected as the uh, president-elect, I would sure like to share with you what the U.S. Congress, led by my Democratic Party, thank you for electing me to finish this wonderful work of healing of our country. Or he could have did it on January the 20th when he was, when he was inaugurated. He could have got up there and said, my fellow Americans, <laughs> no longer ask what the white man must do to you to apologize to you. Because the white man, I want you to know, this summer, if we want to keep it quiet until this wonderful day where we're going to pick up where Abraham Lincoln, though he was a Republican, we're going to pick up where he left off and finish this work that the U.S. Congress... No, he did not do it. You know, brothers and sisters, I firmly believe, children, that had that happened we would have had a different attitude about life. And a lot of the headaches that we have gone through in the last eight years would not have happened. We would be so far down the road to being a post-racial society. How are you going to deny people who say they're sorry that they hurt you? They're sorry they recognize you did wrong. How are you going to deny people like that? And, and now, we're going to come back for one more session on this because it's something I really need to tell you that I'm working on and I think it's time to let you know but what we're doing. Um, okay. This is Ted, homeless activist, civil rights activist, your new voice. You like that voice? Yeah, it's more to come.